Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and today I am talking about what flowers I am winter sowing for my in-ground garden in my new rental plot, my community garden plot. It's the first time I'm renting a community garden this year. I did a video on it recently and it's a big space. It's 25 by 30 feet. I thought I would show you what flowers I am planning to grow in that garden. So by the way, if this is your first time hearing about winter sowing, it's basically a process for growing plants from seed in things like milk jugs that you put outside over winter instead of indoors under grow lights. And if you want to know more about it, check out my winter sowing 101 series. What I'm really excited about is now that I have this new plot, I have the opportunity to grow just about every variety of flower that I've been dreaming of for a long time. Before I go any further, let me note that while I am winter sowing flowers today, you can winter sow anything at any point. You could winter sow all of your stuff in February, all your peppers and tomatoes and flowers. You could winter sow them all in March. You can winter sow them all, all depending on uh, what zone you're in, you could even go through April. So don't feel like you're locked into sewing one kind of thing at a certain time. I just tend to take them in a certain order because it's easier for me to make sure I don't forget anything. All right, so now let's get to seeing what flowers I'm growing this year. And at the same time, I'll do a little bit of winter sewing. First up are zinnias. I love growing zinnias because butterflies and bees and other pollinators love them. In addition to the California giants, I'm also winter sowing violet zinnias for the first time this year, as well as peppermint stick zinnias, which are these beautiful red and white striped zinnias. Last year, I realized I really love white flowers in the garden. And so I got these polar bear zinnia flowers specifically to add beautiful white accents throughout the garden. I added about eight seeds here. And when you're adding soil on top, make sure to check the envelope for flowers to see if they do need to only be pressed into the soil because some seeds do need light to germinate and shouldn't be covered. These queen red lime zinnias I put on my list this year, particularly because I want to have them as feature pieces in bouquets. Because I'm growing more flowers this year, I'm hoping to have bigger bouquets with more colors and more variety. And this is one of the ones that I envision making a really beautiful statement. Because I don't want you to think that I don't ever run into trouble with duct tape, I decided to keep this clip in here just so you can see that uh, sometimes I have trouble too. <laughs> I love growing Celosia and coxcomb. This year it will include a variegated coxcomb that sort of velvety brains, different colors, as well as a green coxcomb. And I'm also gonna be growing a Celosia called Love Lies Bleeding, which is just a stunning flower. And in the little packet in the bottom there, you'll see red gumprina, which is also known as globe amaranth. And this is a flower that dries just beautifully. Here's a picture of some I dried from a different color set last year. This is called Coral Fountains. It's a variety of Love Lies Bleeding, but with coral colors. And I love coral colored flowers. And I think having both the red and the coral in bouquets could make a really stunning effect. I got these seeds from a seed swap and I hadn't been planning on growing them, but when I looked up the photo of them, I was so excited. Don't you just love flowers that have different shades of color on them? For most of these flowers, I've been doing about eight seeds, but for some of them, I've just been sprinkling them. And this was in one case in which I probably sprinkled in eight to 10 seeds. Next up are sunflowers. If you recall, I'm growing container sized sunflowers for my container bed at home, as well as now I'm growing these Velvet Queen dark red sunflowers, as well as Autumn Beauty sunflowers, which I grew last year, and they just added a beautiful ray of sunshine in my garden. These teddy bear sunflowers, not only are they supposed to be sort of fluffy, double layered flowers, but they're also shorter than most sunflowers. So this means I can do two rows of sunflowers. I can do these teddy bear sunflowers in the front with the uh, red sunflowers, the velvet queen sunflowers mixed with the autumn summer flowers together and I think it'll be just really beautiful. 
Three other types of flowers I'm growing this year include a Dahlia mix. It's the Johnny's Dahlia mix that I got from a trade. I'm also going to be growing apricot straw flowers, which are supposed to be great for drying, as well as apricot lemonade cosmos. So I guess there's sort of an apricot theme in this set. Black Swan Poppies. I've never grown poppies before, but I couldn't help growing this after I got them as a bonus packet in a swap with a friend. I had already taken the seeds out and put them in a little packet, but then I noticed that there were some seeds in the bottom and I thought, oh, I should just use those. So I took, it was probably about eight in the bottom <laughs> that I used a, a pair of scissors to loosen up. I've read that this variety gets about four feet tall and that each flower is about four to five inches across. So I think they will just be stunning. And I'm so glad my friend tossed these into the bag that we swapped on. Okay, let's take these containers outside. So last night when I filmed this, it was already freezing outside and I had already covered up my containers that had sprouts in them. So this morning you can see there's, there's frost on the inside. I'm taking them over to the containers that I've already uncovered and putting them on the pile. As a reminder, you only need to cover containers on freezing nights and you only need to cover the ones that have actually sprouted. I tend to cover them all together just because it helps add insulation, but you don't have to. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. And uh, stay tuned because I have a video coming up shortly on what is happening and how much I have worked on my community garden plot. Boy, it is so different than it was last time you saw it. So I can't wait to show you. All right, I'll see you next time.